зашел с небес на город Снегопад. Uh, good morning again. Uh, my name is Stephen Capaldo from Ikad Unity Ministries in North Providence, Rhode Island. And in this uh, second message of the day, um, we'll just be reading from Psalm uh, 37 and just trying to get some basic principles out of that. So before we begin, Father, we would just like to thank you again for another day and another opportunity to have a message. And we ask that your blessings will be upon it and that people will be edified by what they hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Psalm 37, it reads as follows, it's a Psalm of David, so we're talking about David's um, you know, writings about God and you know how, how he uh, views his relationship with God and what he is trying to do in that relationship. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be envious against the workers of injustice. And th these are the people that we've been warned against in the last times as well. Well, this, this isn't the last times, this is the, f the, the, or the last days, uh, or, you know, this is the Old Testament. The, uh, when we talk about the, the, the end times or the last days, uh, usually we mean, um, well, we could be talking about any time from the ascension of Christ to now. Uh, so, the last 2,000 years, but this is before that, so this is this is even before the uh, the last days or the end times. And already David is talking about evildoers, you know, don't fret and don't be envious against the workers of injustice. And we see workers of injustice uh, in, in many walks of life, in many areas. For they will soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. So eventually everybody gets their reward, whatever it was, well, you know, whatever whatever they did for or against God, for or against the kingdom of heaven, for or against Jesus Christ, everyone gets their reward. And if you're on the side of the evildoers and the workers of injustice, you get a negative reward. Trust the Lord, do good. So the trust the Lord is, you know, be reborn of the, of the Spirit, be born again and saved through faith in Christ. Do good then, obey in love, so you will dwell in the land, in, in the land of the kingdom, and you will faithfully be fed. So once you have trusted the Lord and you start doing good, faithfully you'll be fed. You'll be fed by the Holy Spirit. It could be you directly, you know, with the Holy Spirit. It could be someone who is who is getting from the Holy Spirit and then feeding you. And everybody, you know, I did a message recently on, you know, what does it mean to be a pastor? And a pastor can be someone who is ordained and stands behind a pulpit. But a pastor is basically someone who has the job of feeding sheep. And sheep, in the natural realm, you know, sheep are... Um, you know, kind of smelly and slow and, you know, this is, I guess this is, you know, what God is telling us compared to God, we're kind of smelly and, and slow. So, uh, anybody can share a word with anybody else. So anybody can do pastoral work. Uh, if you've got this extra special, this kind of, you know, different calling that you are to be ordained and stand behind a pulpit, uh, you know, that's that that would be one way of being a pastor. But don't don't be discouraged. I mean, if you if you are a person of faith and you uh, you have the word of God in your soul, you are called upon to execute the Great Commission, which means to, sh to share the gospel, share the good news. So that means you're doing pastoral work. It means you're doing evangelical work. And someone who's doing pastoral work, I mean, it's it's based on, first of all, having believed in Jesus Christ. So that, that message should be coming through in any kind of teaching that's done, is that, you know, you are also teaching the, the, the first step of the good news, faith in Christ, and then you're teaching to walk in love. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So in other words, if you put yourself together with the Lord, then his desires will be your desires, your desires will be his desires, and you get the desires of your heart because you're in sync with the Lord. You've got that type of thinking, you're of the same mentality, you're allowing your mind to be renewed little by little by the Holy Spirit through faith in Christ and belief in the Lord God. Commit your way to the Lord. Now, this is Psalm 37. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But here it is in 37.5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. And he'll bring forth your righteousness, because you've trusted him. He will enable you, he will empower you to do good works, to do charitable works in obedience and in love. As the light and your judgment, uh, he'll bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the new day, the new day. So he'll make you, he'll make you discerning. He'll make you a good judge of situations, and he'll allow you to show the light of your good works uh, reflected uh, from the faith that you have in, in Christ. Rest in the Lord. 
So rest in the Lord. That's every day. Rest in the Lord. In other words, abide in Him. Trust Him. You know, we have the the uh, the, the God worked for six days and then He rested on the seventh. So we have this this uh, memorial of the you know the seventh day is a day of rest. Um, but this is just something to do as a general rule, right? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret yourself, again, fret yourself, do not worry, because of the one who succeeds in His way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Just as He was saying before, do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be envious against the workers of injustice here. Do not fret yourself because of the one who succeeds in His way. Stop being angry. Now, there is such a thing as righteous anger, but stop being angry, you know, as a as a general rule and just because that's part of your personality and you know you have these other all of these emotions you know burning inside of you and you just lash out and you get angry at people that's very different from righteous anger abandon wrath you know trying to get back at people do not fret yourself in any way to do evil for those working disorder disorder which is the opposite shalom is order this is ra this is disorder everything that's not of god will be cut off but those who hope in the Lord with shalom will inherit the earth. In other words, they will be in a position of peace and prosperity. They will have the peace and prosperity of God. For yet a little while, and the wicked will not be. Yes, you will diligently consider his place, and it will not be. But the humble will inherit the, the earth. The, 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 uh, the repentant, uh, the meek, uh, the people who acknowledge you know, that they fall short of the mark. The humble will inherit the earth. They will have peace and prosperity. They'll delight themselves in the abundance of shalom. Shalom is everything of God. Ra is everything not of God. The peace and prosperity of God is shalom. The disorder and chaos is Ra. The wicked plot against the just and gnash upon him with his teeth. The Lord will laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. So the wicked plot against the just, I mean, this type of thing uh, goes on. And, you know, I was saying in the other message how you have to be uh, prepared with the appropriate response. You know, you might turn the other cheek. You might, uh, ex you, might uh, you know, offer the word of God to cut down what's... Uh, cut off, you know, what's being done. Uh, it just depends on the circumstances, but you have to have the discernment to know the circumstances. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow, or their bow, to cast down the poor and needy to slay, such as are of upright conduct. So this just tells us that, that we're in this constant situation of, you know, um, being confronted with people who are not of God, who do not love God, who do not love people who love God. We're in a constant situation of that, and it's gone from Genesis to Revelation like that, and it's going to be like that until, you know, the Lord returns and establishes his kingdom on heaven and earth. Um, it, it, this this constant the tug of war in a way you know between uh, the, the 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 haters of God and the lovers of God and uh, and our, our response is just to keep walking in love and you know when we have to take action we take action but we we walk in love we don't we don't uh, we don't give any credibility to these uh, the, to the, the 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 haters of God the and the evil doers we don't give any credibility we may be in a position to speak we may be in a position to hold them accountable at some point in some some type, some type of system or some type of uh, of situation but basically as a spiritual question we just keep walking in love you know we don't make this uh, um, we don't make this uh, a, a battle that we fight instead of letting the Lord fight it the battle is the Lord's. The arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance will be forever. So he knows how long you're going to live, but your inheritance will be forever. So he's numbered your days. So don't do anything that would <clears throat> cut off some of those days. You know, you can make bad decisions that would actually deprive you of some of the days that, Lord has, that, that the Lord has held up for, for you. Uh, so, But don't live that way. If you live... If you live uh, in, in harmony with the Lord, then you'll get the fullness of the days. And sometimes he gives you many, many days, and sometimes he gives you not as many days for his own reasons. And we just have to accept, you know, his, uh, you know, his, uh, his reasons. You know, why does one live a long time and another one, you know, dies of an illness, uh, you know, fairly young? You know, it's, uh, it, it, it may be that, you know, if someone died of an illness, they didn't really take care of themselves or it was genetic or God may have had a reason to allow that to, to come to pass. The point is to believe in Christ, live a life of faith for the number of days that God does give you uh, 
so that you have the, the, the most uh, quality and service and love in your life that you possibly can no matter how many days it is that's you you're going for quality here it's not it's not quantity quantity is nice but really God is focusing on quality of the days that you have they will not be ashamed in the evil time the upright and in the days of famine they will be satisfied but the wicked will perish they won't live in the kingdom of the Lord and Presumably, they won't be reborn of the Spirit, so they will end up with uh, eternal separation and soul destruction. The wicked borrow and do not pay back, but the righteous are gracious and give. You know, two different mentalities. And very very often in the, in the, the Old Testament culture, uh, wicked and evil have to do with being uh, greedy and, and not generous. You know, there's very often an implication that wicked people don't give. You know, they're just, they're, they're kind of cheap. Um, and it's, it's well documented, certainly in Jewish civilization, the history of philanthropy. Uh, and and in, in, in the language itself, there is this kind of, uh, the evil is kind of associated with cheap, you know, the, 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 the evil eye is not generous, you know, this type of thing. Uh, For such as are blessed of him will inherit the earth, and those who are cursed of him will be cut off. The steps of a man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. So you see, the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. And this tells you here that, you know, you walk with God every step of the way, that you don't sort of, you know, this week I'm with him, and next week I'm not, and, you know, I'm taking a couple of weeks off from God, and, you know, I'm going away for a month, and I'll see you at the end of a month, God. No, that's not the, that's not the way it is. The steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. So, so every day, in every decision, somehow the Lord is involved. And... You know, you may not ask a question every time you make a decision, but in anything, anything significant happening in your life, it should be an inspiration from the Holy Spirit for you to do that if you truly have the relationship with God that God wants for you to have with Him. Though he fall, he will not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. So you fall once in a while, you repent, you confess, you get up. You just uh, you have to know when you're getting off track that you need to repent and get back on track. I have been young and now I'm old, haven't we all? Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So, if you're truly of God, your needs are met. You have what you need. If God has a plan for your life and you're, you're obedient to the plan, God is obligated to provide for you. Provide the, uh, you know, what you need, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, income and food and clothing and uh, housing and, you know, whatever it is, and, and, and the, the, the Word of God itself being the most important thing. But, you know, once you're obedient to God's plan, God funds that plan. He has to make sure that there's enough, uh, enough money and assets to fit into what it is He has for you to do. And uh, when, you're, when you start having some financial problem, then examine your heart. Are you really in God's will? Or are you trying to stretch and strive too much outside of what God has for you at that particular time? And, uh, you know, a lot of people get kind of sidetracked by that. They have this idea of what they want to do, but the resources are not yet in place, or they're trying to fabricate resources that God is not ready to give them freely, and they get into trouble that way. So be very careful about that as well. He is ever gracious and lends uh, and lends, and his seed is blessed. Turn from evil, do good, live forevermore. That is the eternal life by faith in Christ. Live forevermore. For the Lord loves judgment, uh, having a good head on you, and does not forsake his holy ones. They're preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked will be cut off. So eventually God wins. You know, the, the, the lesson isn't that, uh, isn't that difficult. Get on the side of the winning team. You know, everybody likes to be on the winning team, but you have to do it because you really want it. You really want to believe in God and you really want to live in love. The righteous who perform good charitable deeds in faith and in obedience will inherit the land and live there forever. You'll, you'll be in this state of union with Christ. The mouth of the righteous one speaks wisdom, the word of God, and his tongue talks of judgment. Good, sober assessments, common sense, logic, that, that type of judgment, not God judging you for eternity. The Torah or the teaching of his God is in his heart. None of his steps will slide. So if you've got the word in your soul, uh, you will be steady and constant and faithful. You won't be erratic and confused and in chaos. You'll be walking a straight path and a pure path. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. And I was saying this before, and that is that the, the, the wicked, when they see faith in action, you know, very often 
the, the reaction is to get angry. It, it could be just ignoring someone or, you know, whatever, but very often they're just, the, the wicked, they just get angrier and angrier. The more they see faith, the angrier they get. And it's just something about, I don't know, one of God's mysteries and, and I don't know, the use of free will of man, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's just, uh, I, I, I'm always struck by how many wicked people, how many people just get angrier and angrier the more they see faith in action. The Lord will not leave him in his hand or condemn him when he is judged. Hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. Faith, hope, and love. These are the greatest is love, but hope. Hope in the Lord. In other words, you know, expect that if you have faith, you'll be blessed. Faith and love, you'll be blessed. Keep his way, the way, the truth, and the life. Right? He will raise you high to inherit the earth. Uh, to, in other words, when the, when the new Jerusalem comes, you know, you inherit the earth. It means you are in a position of peace and prosperity. You're cared for, and you, you're available, and you can love, and you can serve, and you know, you, you'll have genuine spiritual authority from God. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. It doesn't say you will see it and gloat. It just says you'll see it. You'll know. You don't, you don't have to gloat. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. He died. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. So the, the, the wicked perish eventually. They perish spiritually and, and, you know, the eternal separation from God unless they were reborn of the Spirit. But if they were truly wicked, they weren't reborn of the Spirit. They, they, they die. Their soul is destroyed. Mark the perfect man, the, the, the faithful man, and behold the upright, the righteous, living for God. For the end of that man is shalom, peace and prosperity. But the transgressors will be destroyed together. The end of the wicked will be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. So you have two choices. It's always the same, God or not God. God or destruction, life or death, choose life. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Choose life. Thank you, Father, for this message, and thank you for watching out for us every day. And may this message uh, edify those who will hear it. And uh, watch out for us as we move forward with uh, Ekad and, and our ministry and uh, uh, help us be a blessing to others and help us be in a position to receive righteous blessings from, from, from others. Um, we want to be uh, people of the word and we ask for your help every day and the motivation of love and uh, the wisdom of your spirit and all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for watching and thank you, Betsy.